Echo Lane Incorporated is a professional services firm. So we're an SI firm. And we have focused the core of our business around Salesforce.com and its implementation and optimization. And Salesforce has really expanded their footprint as to what they are. And they really function as a platform. So you run into more and more systems and silos of data that exist out in our customers from the mid-market to the enterprise that really for that information to be valuable, it requires being funneled back and forth between systems and having a single point of entry and one place for users to see the content. Um, and that's really what led us down the path of how do we take this on-demand world we live in and find partners that provide integration solutions that map nicely to the market as it stands today, which wasn't historically the case with integration. Historically, when you were integrating data or you were doing anything with massive amounts of information that was unstructured and siloed and out there in the world and difficult to get to, um, it was an eight-month, nine-month engagement of really building out these heavy integrations um, that required um, a very strong technical team that was on site for months on end and was pervasive because it's so modular and because of so much of the intelligence is, are, is in the tool and in the applications that are provided, um, it's been extremely helpful for speed to market. We can get our customers integrated quickly. They can get value out of the information that they're looking for immediately. And the ROI is there for the customers, which again, they then return to Echo Lane as their trusted services partner. So it helps us also grow our business. So it's been, it's been a very mutually beneficial partnership. So in the past, we've done a lot of custom code where we would, you know, we had a particular problem and with Salesforce, we would have a team of developers that would actually build a custom integration tool. But um, a lot of the downfalls about that is that uh, if it breaks and let's say, you know, somebody is to leave the organization, a lot of that knowledge capital is lost. And it's also not very repurposable. Um, so if we do something custom for one customer, it's not something that we can often leverage to many of our other customers. I think it's, I mean, it's, it's well put. A lot of that custom scripting that we were doing, we were doing the build to create the integration components that didn't exist before. So whether it's, whether in our case it's Salesforce to Great Plains or Oracle Business Suite to a homegrown SQL database back to Salesforce, um, that the custom scripting, A, the time it takes to do that, and then there's no feature function add to that. You're not able to learn from each deployment how you can kind of structure that service packaging. With Pervasive, we're able to do that. We're able to do that in a repeatable market from a vertical focus perspective. You, after 700 implementations of Salesforce and many of them using Pervasive for integration, you learn what are the common fields that everybody needs when they want their invoice history to come over into Salesforce. And those things are packageable and it, it increases even our speed to deployment, which is beneficial as an internal organization. So one of our, uh, an example of a solution in which we leveraged the pervasive technology was with a customer of ours, National Retirement Partners. And they are one of the largest independent retirement broker dealers in the country. And one of their key pain points was um, the ability to provide their benefit advisors and member firms access to commission data. That information was always delayed. And so what we did was they wanted a way to integrate the information from their commission database to be fed right into Salesforce.com where their member firm uh, advisors are actually you know, working out of on a daily basis in those records to be able to access that information at their fingertips. And so we used Pervasive to um, basically go out there, gather that data, push it into Salesforce, and now all of their um, reps are a lot more productive. It also allows them to make uh, uh, better decisions upon you know, what plans that they should be offering and, and which ones are successful and, and uh, which ones are not, and to, make, and to respond faster and make appropriate changes uh, in a more timely fashion if, if they need to. Yeah. And that's also bi-directional and it's real time, so that information is constantly where it needs to be at the fingertips of the users that care about it. The pervasive integration for NRP was about a six-week project, um, which was, again, very quick considering the, the amount of information they wanted passed into Salesforce. And again, if we compare it to what a uh, traditional way of deployment of coding something on our own would have taken months and months. And I think another example of some of our high-tech customers, um, especially in the consumer space, which you see more of where there's high transactional data, um, 
that transactional information is critical to be sent back through to the core repository so that people can see the status of that customer. How often are they transacting? Are they buying my products after they do a trial? And typically that's done in the ERP system. So, you know, an example is Great Plains. And with the new connector with, that Pervasive has available, we're able to take transaction history from Great Plains and push that into whatever system needs to be there. The other side of that is when I close an opportunity and a new customer assign my contract, I can push that information through Pervasive into Great Plains and it can generate an invoice. And so the automation that exists there, it's, it's hours and hours and days and days off of people's daily jobs where they can focus on things that are much more important and not administrative. Part of why we went the route initially of doing the custom development because the alternatives that were out there, these point solutions of end to end, okay, I want to connect Salesforce to QuickBooks or Salesforce to Oracle eBusiness or SAP or what have you, um, they just, they didn't scale. And if you wanted to add another, oh, by the way, we also have a homegrown database and this has financial information that we also need to push in with limited visibility, there was no way to set up those business rules in easily and they essentially would break at a certain point. There was a give point, both from a volume perspective and from a business process mapping perspective. And so, which is why initially we had gone the route of sort of traditional scripting and, and coding as it related to integration, and, and why Pervasive as a tool has been monumentally helpful um, for a lot of our customers, and we see more and more down the line in the future. I think one of the great aspects of it is the ability to make changes on the fly fairly quickly. You can have uh, a number of jobs and tasks and activities running, and let's say that uh, who knows, a requirement comes up where one of the customers you know, doesn't want their file to be picked up at midnight anymore, it needs to be 3 a.m. because of reasons A, B, C, and D, and that you can easily go into the tool, make that change without breaking um, everything else, and all those other jobs can still be running uh, in the background. So the ease of adaptability, I think, is, is huge. And I think the one other thing that I would add is that the nature of services is there. there's ebb and flow of services. Um, so there's always a need. If you have too much business, you wish you had a larger team, et cetera, et cetera. And that's just the nature of the beast. But Pervasive also has a strong services team, and we work very closely with them. So we are able to now provide augmentation of that team with certified experts in Pervasive that can jump into a services engagement being an added technical architect or design or an implementation consultant that provides the breadth to expand Pervasive's internal team and vice versa. I think that's really a, a successful integration in general is planning for the unknown <laughs> and how do you do that. So that's with Pervasive, you don't have to. What you know is that it will change and that's okay because you have the ability to go in and, and change those workflows and change those business rules and you don't have to worry about it breaking the integration which in a lot of cases either with other tools that are less scalable or custom scripting the code, it's just it's not a doable solution. And just I think most importantly, um, I've worked in the past in other organizations where partnerships where oh we have this partner, we put their logo on our website and we talk to them once a month about our joint pipeline and it really goes nowhere. And I just think that what I've what I've seen and what's refreshing is that Pervasive has been committed to its partner channel. Um, and the objective not being how many partners can we check off the list, but how many viable partners that actually help both grow Pervasive's business by bringing customer opportunities to the table and people that can really bang on the product and give as much feedback as possible, but also brings back to the partner. And, and I think that's too often rare. And that's, been, that's something that's very important to us as a growing company, um, that those partnerships are viable, and valuable, and real. It's great to be in Austin as well. If you've never been, you need to go. That's true. <laughs> you saw some good Texas music last night. I think it's the sister city of San Francisco with a little Texan vibe. <laughs>